basic ZBrush painting. That's the last thing we're gonna do on our dyno. And uh, so I've done my crazy Cybersaurus um, and I wanna paint him now. You can see he's kind of a purpley metallic color. Um, you have two things down there. You have a material and you have um, uh, color, which the middle is um, like the tone dark and light uh, and then the outside box is the individual hue um, you know the individual color um, so I could go over here to I'm over here right now uh, red orange and then make it a really light red orange with the middle one. so that would be my color right there. Um, when I want to fill my dyno in with its general overall color I go to color in the menu bar and I go pick my color like I just did and I go to fill color or fill object but the first thing you need to remember here is you're always going to be painting always um, well not always there's some exceptions um, but 90% of the time you're going to want to go get the standard brush which I'm searching for right now in this big mess so we can just go to S and then there's the standard brush so you want to get the standard brush um, to paint with, generally speaking. But you can paint with other stuff. Sometimes painting with some weird stuff like the planar or whatever will kind of do weird things that are kind of interesting. But um, generally speaking, you want to go to the standard brush to paint. And that's for individual, like, color. And so you can see um, I'm painting here and it's sort of tinting. It d depends on your intensity, if it's gonna be slightly transparent, your um, uh, RGB intensity, I mean, and your focal shift and your draw size. So I can like start tinting him and I can build up coats of that color, all right? Um, when you're painting on the standard brush, you wanna make sure that you have all this add and sub stuff off. You just click on it to get rid of it. And that means when it's on, it'll, you know, the, the brush will do the distortion that it's supposed to do. But when you take it off, you don't have anything. All it'll do is paint. Now, when you paint, you're always going to be going to this RGB intensity. Um, you see, like when I go to the other intensity here, it doesn't do anything. RGB intensity, though, will allow me to paint a little bit more intently <laughs> um, with more saturated color. Um, so you, this is your transparency right here, your RGB intensity. But what we have here is MRGB and MRGB. And um, uh, when you're painting with your alpha, that's the type of brush that you're using, which we're not going to get into. So the A always needs to be on. But if you're going to do the material and the color, you put it on R and RGB. If you're just painting the color, you go to RGB. And if you're painting this material only, you go to M. And I'll show you what those are in a second here. Right now I'm on color only. So down here, whatever my, in this gradient box, whatever my hue is and whatever my shade is, that's what it's gonna paint. So I can put it on like a different color and a darker version and a more intent. And I will paint with that intensity okay um so you're gonna have to like kind of like get into painting a little bit here and learn some basic like what we call glazing techniques which is building up transparencies of different colors to get the overall effect so you put your intensity low and you slowly build up with different shades of color and you can get all kinds of really neat looks okay um First things first, though, what should my overall color of my Cybersaurus be? Um, when you click on material, these are all the default materials that we have. We have gold and we have like metal and glass and there's like, you know, jelly bean is kind of glass and we have um, simple glass and water and there's all these basic materials. It's not like Cinema 4D with the, the, all the pre-built. These are the pre-built and then you're supposed to kind of like, you know, modify it to suit your needs. Oh, let's, let's just, uh, 
It's this pick. Normally you're on like, I think the matte cap red there. Um, and there are textures that you can use. So if you wanted to paint with like a modeled look, uh, I could go pick a texture and I could go put it on MRGB up here. And I'm gonna start kind of trying to, it's gonna sort of start trying to paint with the matte cap and the texture. Um, texture, remember, is the bumps. It's not the color, okay? So you're not painting that. It's just like if you're painting dirt and you want it to look like it has some highs and lows and not everything's a solid color. Or you could just turn texture off right now. I think you should leave texture off right now and leave alpha alone and leave the dots alone until we're at the point where we can kind of get into that stuff. And that'll be kind of on the next project or the one after that or maybe when you guys come back to me as seniors and we're doing like the uh, mythology project or something. Um, right now you're going to want to play with material and color, those two. And that is M for material. So when I'm painting material only, let's say I want to go in there, let's get something like aluminum. Um, so you can see I'm a painting with aluminum and it's getting shiny. That is the material. And you can see that, why is it still saying purple? Because that I'm on material only. So it's going to just take the shininess part of the material, okay? Um, like droplet, okay? If I go in there, it's gonna try to paint in that droplet look or uh, balloon, which is just a flat. And you can see it leaves all the color. This is just the, the material. The material is like the um, reflectiveness and the graininess is the texture and the color would be the gradient. So we have, you know, like feathers and hair and rock and stuff has texture. Um, materials like chrome and metal and glass uh, and um, the color, okay? So you, you kind of have to blend all three. It's a little bit more complex than Cinema 4D is. Um, let's leave texture off, like I said. So material, you can go pick your material. And let's see, I just want to fill the whole thing in with Madcap uh, Red, okay? So I'm going to go to MRGB. That means it'll use the material and the color. And when we go to color up here, I could go fill object with color, and it's filled it with color, okay? I could go to color and I could go to um, get my red tone and go to just I'm on RGB only. Uh, go bring up my intensity and go to um, fill. Uh, and you can pick the color here too, by the way. And then fill object with color and then it fills it all in with color. So let's say, I don't know, like I'm trying to think of like what would be a good base color for my um, my dino to be. Uh, hold on one second here. And uh, I don't know, like what would be a good base color? Like should the metal plates be a certain color and should the, you know, the dyno. Uh, and that's why we have things over here, which we haven't really made use of too much, but um, over here where we were playing around with, um, uh, Dynamesh and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have something called Subtool, which I think I, I went over briefly when I did Extract. Um, Subtool, if we separate, if I had done this like, you know, in a more complete way once we've learned all these little things, I would have separated all these pieces, parts, and put them as subtools, and that way I could have painted them separately really easily. Uh, and we'll kind of do that when we do your anthropomorphic um, character. Okay, but right now, let's just practice on our overall dino. I don't think any of you are doing a weird sci fi source like I was. Uh, I think you're just doing a normal dinosaur and you want to paint like spots or stripes or, you know, uh, maybe a belly's a different color. Maybe the back has some modeling to it. Um, you know, look at some illustrations on the internet and see, like, you know, what, a, what do dinos uh, look up illustration? 
What are people illustrating? I mean, people don't know. <laughs> I don't mean these stupid cartoony things. Let's just do dinosaur. Um, a dino might be too cute of a word. Really nice misspelled. So let's, okay. Um, there we go. I don't know why I'm in the stupid cute zone, but here's one. Um, you can see like, you know, they don't know what color dinos really were. I mean, cause all we have is bones and stuff and fossils, but um, they speculate just like animals. They had, you know, different colors on their backs for camouflage and um, their underneath side and, uh, you know, things like that. So you can kind of, you know, get in there and sort of like figure out some inspiration from that that stuff. So I want to fill my dino in with an overall color and an overall material. So with my color, let's say I want my dino to be green. Okay, so I'm going to go to get a green tone. Uh, I want it to be more on the bluish side. So I'm going to get that. I could also do it up here if I want to have a clear view of the color and then fill object. And so now he's green. I don't want them to be shiny like that at all. Maybe my armor I do. Um, so I'm gonna go to uh, material and I'm just gonna get like madcap. Um, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, maybe skin shade, something flat. Looking around will be a good one. Flat color. <laughs> we'll go with that. Flight color. All right. And so um, I'm going to go to just a material for that because I don't want to alter the color to this white. And I'm going to go to color and go fill object. And maybe that's too flat because <laughs> I'm not um, seeing any of my detail. So let's go to maybe skin shade. And... Um, when I click on it, it automatically does it. Uh, if I want to change it, I usually just go to fill object anyways. All right, so um, that's a little less shiny-ish than the other matte cap. Um, I think it's too green though. Uh, so I'm gonna go to RGB to, and I wanna go to a darker green and I'm gonna go to color, fill color. There we go. All right, so now um, I want to start paint. Let's just paint in his eyeball or something. Um, so let's get in close to his eyeball. And maybe we'll paint his teeth and horns. I'm going to get a smaller brush. And um, with his eyeball, um, what do I want to paint? Do I want to paint material or color? I do want to do both. Um, so I'm going to first go to my material and choose Jelly Bean. And uh, I'm going to go to MRGB and choose an orange Jelly Bean. And as I start doing that, oops, um, you can see his eyeball is getting painted. Now it's getting a little pixelated. Um, and I'm painting with the standard brush because I might, I could use some maybe some extra resolution so I could go to geometry and hit divide and then hit delete lower just so that it doesn't kill your computer. And you can see those little areas are um, smaller. And you know, mind you, um, I'm on 100% RGB for intensity, I, I could take that down and kind of build it up. And I'm painting with my mouse, so I probably want to paint this with um, we'll frame it up. And I'm really close, you know, so it's getting a little bit smooshy and pixelated um, and I was painting with a little bit too intense and let's say I want the highlight on his red eye to be um, I don't know 
uh, a little bit brighter. So I'll go to yellow and I'll do it um, with our MRGB. So I'm still painting the jelly bean material, but I could kind of like highlight a little yellow spot, you know, so he's more Terminator. I could go uh, take off and go back to RGB and um, go back to try to find a, you know, like a green tone and, you know, maybe go to an even smaller brush and try to um, just put it on uh, MRGB and sort of try to paint over um, that area. Oh, I'm on jelly beans still, no wonder. Let me go and get matte cap. We'll go matte cap brush. And then let's go to, um, I'll go to, you know what, that might be too shiny. Let's go to, for the teeth, um, I don't think there's an ivory in here. We can go to simple plastic and I could go get, I'm on material and color up there, a white tone and start painting in. Um, his teeth and see this is why they make everything separate uh, with subtools is because you can see like when it's all one thing like we're doing it's it's really hard to paint it properly. Okay, but we're we're not focusing so much on the painting for this project. We're just kind of more or less learning the modeling aspect. And on the next project, we'll focus a little bit more on the painting and the separating of shapes and subtools things like that. I didn't want to give it to you on this one to worry about because I didn't want you hassling with too much information and just taking it step by step. I'm kind of I'm kind of just going fast here and uh, getting a little sloppy Joe on um, my tooth is I just thought this white plastic would be a good tooth color. And it would be better if I was using um, a uh, paintbrush or a stylus pen, I mean. All right, and let's say that some of his horns we can do that. Have some. Let's go up in paint size just to cover more area. Have a. Different color to them, like tusks on an elephant. All right, see, I'm painting material and color. So that means the material here, this stuff, and I like how shiny it's going to be and all that. Um, glassy, whatever you're going to be doing to it. And kind of getting soft plasticky so it's not as glary. 
and then my color, which is white, and it's it's I'm painting with an intensity that's not a hundred percent, so it's kind of like leaving some shade and tone behind of where the green is. But I kind of want that, so it's a little bit mottled and not absolutely perfect. And then we'll do one more thing, and then that should kind of give you enough to sort of do some basic color on your dino. Do I have any more horns that are like that color? No. All right. Um, so what else should we do? Well, we have all his... Um, his uh, metal plating and cyber parts. So maybe um, I want to go get, uh, still use MRGB, and I want to paint with, um, I don't know if chrome is, it might be too chromey. Aluminum was kind of cool, and then RSA aluminum, was, and then there's gold. I'll kind of go with RSA aluminum. Um, so I want to paint some of these. And that, when I have it on MRGB, it will paint the materials color. If I just take and put it on RGB, it'll um, paint whatever just my color is. And if I put it on just M, it's going to paint the material. And I'm on white, so... It's that's why it's gonna stay crumb. So let me I just noticed that. So let me get like a an actual little blue. Alright, so material will just be the shiny part. Color. color and material. Alright, I don't want to keep all that crap that I just did. So I'm going to just be painting with uh, MRGB for a minute here and trying to get some of these. Just I'm going to be sloppy about it, so forgive my quality control because it'll just, you know, I don't want to have like a 60 minute video. Um, I'm going there and paint some of these metal pieces. And make him look a little bit more cybernetic. Okay, so that is what I think we will end it at. Um, so that's your basic painting. Um, I have used M for material, RGB for just color, and MRGB for um, both material and color. Here's your material, here's your color. Have at it. Uh, I think. In class, I'll go over it a little bit more, like some model techniques and stuff like that, but you can kind of see what I've done so far, and I think you'll have fun with that for your basic um, uh, painting of your project.